in the vast and broad Xuanzhou continent, which contain a hundred thousand sects in the eastern frontier. Those who have achieved great mastery in cultivation can control the rotation of the sun and moon, holding the universe in their hearts. The pinnacle of martial arts lies in surpassing the end of the celestial path and achieving the taste of the emperor's fruit. Yet, the path to the heavens is incredibly difficult. A slight misstep and one falls into an endless purgatory where the body turns to ashes and the soul scatters. In a certain sect, a patriarch sits in solemn contemplation, his thoughts burdened by the weight of his son's transgressions. With a stern gaze, he reprimands the young heir, his words cutting through the air like a sharpened blade. Rebellious child, he begins, his voice echoing with authority. Why did you have to provoke the divine blade sect out of all the choices? Secretly drugging a female disciple of the divine blade sect, violating her body, and even killing her to cover it up, he thundered, his voice echoing through the grand hall. The most important thing is, you shouldn't have left evidence. His son, kneeling on the ground with his forehead touching the cold floor, pleaded for forgiveness. Dad, I'm sorry. I was just temporarily misguided. I had just returned from the Ching Yun sect and couldn't endure it for a moment. But his words only fueled his father's anger leading to a stern reprimand and a slap that echoed a warning of the gravity of his mistake. Foolishness! Even at this point you refuse to repent? The patriarch bellowed, his disappointment palpable. His son, tears streaming down his face, begged for his life, fearing the consequences of his actions. Father, I don't want to die. You have to save me. The patriarch, though cold and seemingly unforgiving, had already set plans in motion to protect his son and the sect's millennia-old foundation. Well, since there's still room for maneuvering, I will send you to Qingyun sect for further training. No one in the eastern frontier recognizes you. I've already found a scapegoat and sent it to the Divine Blade sect, he declared, offering a sliver of hope amidst the looming crisis. Hearing his father's plan, the son's fear turned into relief, and he hastily expressed his gratitude eager to escape the dire situation he had caused. Thank you, Dad. I'll take my leave, he said, a smile breaking through his previously despairing demeanor as he exited the place. Left alone, the patriarch sank back into his chair, his mind racing with strategies to navigate the delicate situation with the Divine Blade sect and safeguard his sect's honor and legacy. He knew the path ahead would be fraught with danger, requiring every ounce of his cunning and strength. High atop a rugged mountain, where the winds whisper tales of ancient battles and the very earth trembles with power, stands the imposing stronghold of the Divine Blade sect. A massive blade, crackling with potent energy, guards its entrance, a solemn reminder of the sect's formidable strength and unwavering resolve. Within the yard of the sect, a palpable tension fills the air, as disciples gather in hushed clusters, their voices buzzing with anticipation and curiosity. I heard that today they're going to escort a lecherous criminal, one murmurs, their words tinged with disdain. Indeed, another replies, their tone grim. It's said that the Holy Maiden herself will administer justice, preserving the honor of our divine blade sect. And as the anticipation reaches its peak, a figure emerges from the depths of the sect, her presence commanding attention and respect. She is the Holy Maiden, her beauty matched only by the strength of her spirit and the sharpness of her blade. But amidst the murmurs and whispers, a man, bound in heavy chains, steps forward, his aura pulsating with a strange and unsettling energy. It is the protagonist of our tale a figure shrouded in mystery. The two disciples, charged with his custody, bow respectfully before the Holy Maiden, their voices trembling with reverence. Reporting to the Holy Maiden, one declares, his words respectful yet tinged with apprehension. The lecherous criminal has been brought here. Please handle it, Holy Maiden. 
and as the holy maiden's eyes fall upon the accused, her expression hardens with determination. With a swift motion, she leaps into the air, her blade crackling with raw energy as she prepares to deliver swift justice. Pervert! she cries out, her voice echoing through the place. You've insulted the disciples of our Divine Blade sect. Today, I will administer justice to you on the spot, she declares. But as her strike looms ever closer, a ripple of shock courses through the crowd, their gasps of disbelief punctuating the air. It's the Holy Maiden's sacred blade, one exclaims, their voice tinged with disbelief. I never expected it would be used on such a despicable leecher. And then, in a moment that defies comprehension, our protagonist stirs from his seemingly unconscious state. With a casual ease that belies belief, he halts the blade with a single finger, shattering the chains that bind him as if they were made of paper. The Holy Maiden, her eyes wide with disbelief, can scarcely believe what she is witnessing. Using just one finger, he actually blocked my attack, she breathes her voice tinged with awe and disbelief. As murmurs of shock ripple through the crowd, a young girl speaks out, her voice trembling with amazement. He, he actually managed to withstand a move from the Holy Maiden, but amidst the commotion, one voice rises above the rest, filled with indignation and anger. How dare you fight back, a man shouts, his face contorted with rage. Yet our protagonist remains unruffled, his demeanor calm and collected as he addresses the Holy Maiden. Hey, where is this place? he inquires, his voice steady and unwavering. The Holy Maiden, her teeth gritted with frustration, meets his gaze with a glare of defiance. The place where you will be buried! she snarls, her anger fueling her next assault. With blinding speed, she launches a barrage of strikes, her movements leaving behind afterimages that converge upon the accused like a swarm of vengeful spirits. But our protagonist remains steadfast, his gaze unwavering as he calmly blocks each strike with a single finger, his movements defying logic and reason. At that moment, our protagonist finds himself increasingly exasperated by the lack of response to his question. Hey, I'm asking you a question he asserts once more, his voice tinged with frustration, yet still met with resounding silence. Meanwhile, the Holy Maiden, her attacks relentless and fierce, finds herself grappling with an unexpected challenge. Sweat drips from her brow as she mutters to herself in disbelief. How is this possible? I'm on the verge of a major breakthrough, yet I couldn't handle a single finger. The onlookers, their eyes wide with shock and disbelief, stand frozen in awe at the incredible display before them. Each strike, each parry, seems to defy the very laws of nature, leaving them spellbound and bewildered. Amidst the stunned silence, one man's rage ignites like a flame in the darkness. You bold maniac, he bellows, his fury boiling over as he tightens his grip on his sword and charges towards our protagonist. Holy maiden, I'll lend you a helping hand. With a menacing glint in his eyes, he aims to strike our protagonist from behind, his blade poised to deliver a devastating blow. But our protagonist, sensing the impending danger, reacts with lightning speed. With a steely gaze and a fierce resolve, he commands, That's enough! In an instant, he unleashes a devastating punch, his fist connecting with the assailant's body with bone-crushing force. The man is sent hurtling through the air, crashing into the wall. As the smoke clears and the echoes fade, the man remains stuck in the wall, his fellow sect members rushing to his aid with panicked shouts of concern. Senior Brother Lee! Not good! Quickly, save Senior Brother Lee! They cry out. But our protagonist interrupts their frantic efforts with a determined declaration. I'm going to ask again, where is this place? he demands, his voice cutting through the chaos with unwavering resolve. As our protagonist reels from the sudden pain in his head, the Holy Maiden seizes the opportunity to launch another assault. Formation! she commands, her voice echoing through the place, 
But as the disciples rally to her call, brandishing their blades and surrounding our protagonist with menacing intent. But as the disciples close in for the attack, our protagonist's eyes snap open, a wave of clarity washing over him. I remember now, he declares, his voice cutting through the tension like a blade. In that instant, a flood of memories rushes back to him, memories of a distant past where he once stood as the heavenly emperor, his loyal female companion, Xian Er, by his side. With concern etched on her face, she questions his resolve. Do you really want to do this? she asks. You've overcome the heavenly path and achieved the position of the heavenly emperor. Now, do you think it's worth dispersing your cultivation? Surrounded by swirling flames, our protagonist reflects on his journey. I originally thought that achieving the emperor's position would grant me the ultimate understanding of sword cultivation, he explains. But now, after tens of thousands of years, the blade essence within me remains stagnant, devoid of any growth or progress. As the flames coalesce into razor-sharp blades behind him, and others materialize in front of him from his spatial storage, our protagonist turns to his trusted companion. Disperse cultivation and recultivate. It's imperative, he declares with conviction. He then issues a command to Xian, his faithful ally. Guard the path for me, he instructs her. If there's an attack, eliminate them without mercy. Upon hearing his words, Xian nods solemnly, accepting her duty without hesitation. After that, our protagonist takes a decisive action, combining the blades into one and throwing it into the air. The blade emits a unique, dazzling energy. With a determined resolve, he then extracts a ball of energy from his body, causing him considerable pain. Despite his exhaustion, he turns to Jean Er, his loyal ally, and speaks with heavy breaths. This is the Heavenly Emperor's decree. During this period, you will temporarily assume the position of the Heavenly Emperor. Xian Er accepts the decree with reverence, holding it in her hand and acknowledging its significance. The Heavenly Emperor's decree symbolizes the Imperial Throne, she remarks, her voice tinged with a hint of authority. But suddenly, a wicked smile spreads across Yan Er's face, betraying her true intentions. With a swift and treacherous movement, she launches a sneak attack from behind, striking our protagonist with devastating force and causing him to stagger under the impact. Blood spills from his lips as he struggles to remain standing, his strength waning with each passing moment. In a voice laced with betrayal and disbelief, our protagonist manages to utter, Xianer, you? Before succumbing to his injuries and collapsing to the ground, his body racked with pain and exhaustion. Standing over him with a sinister grin, Xian Er reveals her true colors. Call me the Heavenly Emperor, she declares, her words dripping with malice as she revels in her newfound power and authority. With pure anger burning in his eyes, our protagonist, Lin Dao, confronts Xian Er, his once trusted companion who has revealed her true identity in a shocking betrayal. You've been by my side for thousands of years, and I never even discovered your true identity he accuses, his voice thick with resentment and disbelief. But Xian Er meets his accusation with a wicked smile, taunting him with her words. Even after ten thousand years you still can't see through a person, she sneers. How can a fool with a brain like yours be worthy of the throne? With a hand signs Xian. Er summons swords made of crackling energy, surrounding herself with a formidable display of power. I really don't understand why you always have this arrogant demeanor when clearly you're nothing but an idiot who knows nothing except martial arts, she continues to berate him. How can the fate of this world be in the hands of someone like you? With a malicious glint in her eyes, she declares, Lin Dao, your era has come to an end. Just then, she combines the swords of energy into a single powerful beam. She launches a devastating attack at Lin Dao. In the aftermath of the explosion, Xian Er stands triumphant, her victory assured. With a sneer of contempt, she declares, From now on, there is no more Lin Dao in this world, only me, Wang Xian. As a surge of energy explodes, Wang Xian is violently propelled backward, 
her shock evident as she gazes upon the standing figure of Lin Dao. Dodging his retaliatory attack, she struggles to comprehend how he could still be alive. Impossible, she cries out, disbelief etched on her face. Hovering above her with an energy resembling wings, Lin Dao exudes an otherworldly presence. Wang Xian, recovering from her astonishment, asks, Have you mastered the essence of the blade? Despite suffering grievous wounds, a gaping hole in his chest and the loss of his left eye, Lin Dao remains resolute. Wang Xian, he declares, his voice filled with determination. The heavenly emperor's decree is not meant for one such as you. With a surge of gathered energy, Lin Dao conjures a colossal blade of energy, its brilliance illuminating the battlefield. With a swift, decisive motion, he brings the blade crashing down upon Wang Xian, unleashing a thunderous explosion that reverberates across the entire planet. Wang Xian finds herself desperately fending off the relentless assault of our protagonist. Her screams echo across the battlefield as she struggles against the overwhelming force of his attack. Amidst the chaos, Lin Dao's voice cuts through the chaos, his words carrying a weight of both revelation and inevitability. Do you see it? He asks Wang Xian, drawing her attention to the fractured sky above. With a gaze fixed upon the celestial rupture, Lin Dao, his body beginning to fade, speaks with a sense of resignation. This world cannot endure the might of the blade's essence. Even the celestial pathways bear the mark of my power. As the dust settles and the aftermath of their clash becomes apparent, Wang Xian finds herself grievously wounded, her left arm severed in the ferocious battle. With a sinister expression, she grits her teeth and speaks, it's a shame I couldn't end you, her voice heavy with regret. But even in the face of defeat, Wang Xian's resolve remains unbroken. With a furious cry, she directs her anger towards Lin Dao, her voice ringing out across the battlefield. Lin Dao, ah, she shouts, her words reverberating with raw emotion. Before his form fades into oblivion, Lin Dao offers his final words to Wang Xian a promise of return tinged with uncertainty. Wang Xian, wait for me. I, Lin Dao, will come back, he declares, his voice echoing in the aftermath of their confrontation. As our protagonist concludes his introspection of the past, his consciousness returns to the present moment. As he opens his eyes, a surge of energy emanates from his body, sending the people attempting to attack him flying backward. Just then, Lin Dao, our protagonist, demonstrates an extraordinary ability to manipulate the blades wielded by the disciples with just a simple gesture of his hand. Confusion and panic grip the disciples as their blades act against their will, defying their attempts to control them. Why is my blade out of control? What's happening? They exclaim in disbelief, their voices echoing off the stone walls of the training grounds. Even the revered Holy Maiden finds herself unable to rein in her blade, her attempts futile against this mysterious force. As all the blades converge around Lin Dao, the Holy Maiden, with trembling lips, demands answers. What sorcery have you cast upon the sacred blades of our divine sword sect? She implores, her eyes wide with incredulity. In response, Lin Dao remains composed, his demeanor unwavering. The sacred blade of your divine sword sect? He muses, a hint of amusement flickering in his eyes. With a simple gesture, he commands the swords to rise, then proclaims, Let me correct one thing first. All the blades in this world belong to me, Lin Dao, alone. His words send shivers down the spines of those present, leaving the holy maiden murmuring to herself, What in the world is he? Meanwhile, Lin Dao reaches out and takes hold of the Holy Maiden's sword, his fingers tracing the intricate patterns etched into its surface. The sacred blade of your divine sword sect is only of the yellow tier level, he observes casually. Suddenly, a brilliant yellow light bursts forth from the blade, bathing Lin Dao in its radiant glow. Then, he brings the blade close to his face, his eyes shining with determination. You and I are destined to be together. In that case, I'll help you refine it, he declares. 
With a fluid motion, he sends the Holy Maiden's blade spiraling upwards into the air. As the blade hovers overhead, he guides the blades of the other disciples toward the floating weapon. One by one, these blades moving to merge with the Holy Maiden's blade. As the transformation takes shape, the onlookers are struck dumb with awe. The blades twist and meld, their forms shifting and coalescing until they resemble the sinuous shape of a dragon. The Holy Maiden, her brow furrowed with disbelief, can only stare in shock as the dragon blade takes form before her eyes. Beads of sweat dot her forehead as she struggles to comprehend the enormity of what she's witnessing. Is the sacred blade advancing? She breathes, her voice trembling with a mixture of fear and wonder. How can this be? As the merging process continues, the Holy Maiden's thoughts race, her mind grappling with the implications of this unprecedented event. The sacred blade of our divine blade sect, crafted by our ancestral master over a hundred years with great effort, is already of the highest quality in the yellow tier, she murmurs, her voice tinged with disbelief. But as the merged blade pulses with energy, she can't help but cry out in astonishment. But now, the power it is emitting, it can even reach the profound rank, she gasps, her heart pounding with excitement and trepidation. And then, in the final moments of the merging process, the sacred blade emerges in all its glory. Its form is majestic and awe-inspiring, its surface adorned with the intricate texture of a dragon's scales. It's even more than the profound rank. This, this is beyond anything we could have imagined. The Holy Maiden exclaims, her eyes wide with wonder and amazement. Staring at the blade with admiration, Lindau declares, This sacred blade is exceptionally exquisite. In a bold display of strength and determination, Lindau leaps into the air, grasping the blade tightly in his hands. With a great force, he slams the blade into the ground, sending shockwaves rippling through the sect. From now on, this blade shall be called the Overlord Blade, Lindau proclaims. With the blade held firmly behind his back, Lindau radiates an aura of power and dominance. This divine sword sect belongs to me. Do you have any objections? He declares, his voice echoing with undeniable authority. The Holy Maiden, though shocked by Lindau's bold declaration, knows that he is far stronger than her. Unable to muster a response, she can only watch in silence. Turning to face her, Lindau's eyes shine with an otherworldly light, his presence commanding respect and obedience. It seems like you have no objections, he says, his voice filled with confidence. As the energy radiating from the sacred blade pulsates throughout the sect, Shock and disbelief grip the hearts of those who bear witness. The sacred blade has advanced, someone exclaims, their voice trembling with awe. Even the sect master, deeply engrossed in her cultivation, senses the shift in energy. With a furrowed brow, she murmurs to herself, Could it be that girl Jiming Yu has had a breakthrough? Without hesitation, she abandons her meditation and rushes to the main hall to investigate. To her surprise, she finds the hall filled with disciples, all gazing at a mysterious figure seated upon her own chair. With a fierce expression on her face, the sect master confronts the intruder, asking, Who are you? Then, her gaze falls upon the sacred blade in the intruder's possession, and a sense of unease washes over her. He sees the sacred blade, she mutters to herself, her mind racing with questions and I can't even discern his cultivation. Could he be someone from a major power? Suppressing her mounting anxiety, she introduces herself. I am Leng Yu Shuang, the sect master of the Divine Blade sect, she declares. May I ask why you have come to our sect? Our protagonist, unfazed by her imposing demeanor, offers a casual response. Oh, that's a nice name, he remarks his tone betraying no hint of concern. Then, his gaze then shifts to Lung Yu Shuang's body, and he makes an unexpected remark. Your body is decent, he comments. The sect master's anger flares at his audacity. You're making fun of me, she retorts, 
her voice tinged with irritation. With a pensive expression, our protagonist, Lin Dao, places a hand on his chin, sensing a familiar aura emanating from the figure before him. There's a familiar aura about you. Your name is Leng. Are you related to that brat, Leng Xiangqiu? He inquires, his words causing a ripple of shock among the gathered disciples. The sect master, her features contorted with fury, admonishes our protagonist for his boldness. Senior, your cultivation is indeed remarkable, but you cannot simply call out the name of our divine blade sect's ancestor like that, she scolds, her voice trembling with indignation. Surprised by the revelation, Lin Dao expresses his disbelief. Ancestor? Ten thousand years ago? I never thought it would take me ten thousand years to return with my consciousness, he exclaims, his eyes widening with astonishment. As memories of Leng Chiangkyo flood his mind, our protagonist sighs, acknowledging the passage of time. Unexpectedly, that kid has already undergone spiritual ascension, he reflects, recognizing the achievements of his friend. With unwavering resolve, Lin Dao asserts his authority. From today onwards, I am the sect master of the Divine Blade sect. Please step back, he commands, his voice resolute. But Leng Yu Shuang, the current sect master, refuses to yield. With fierce determination, she challenges our protagonist's claim. Although I don't know who you are, the Divine Blade sect is the foundation of our ancestor for 10,000 years. We cannot simply bow down and yield like this, she declares, her voice echoing through the hall. In a display of defiance, Leng Yue Shuang draws a blade from her chest, her resolve unyielding. Even if the Divine Sword sect is destroyed, we will never surrender without a fight, she proclaims, her words resounding with conviction. Impressed by her courage, our protagonist offers his praise. Leng Chiang your descendants are truly remarkable he muses to himself, a wide smile spreading across his face. Turning his attention back to Leng Yu Shuang, Lin Dao, says with a gentle voice, Come closer, I have something to tell you. Muttering to herself in a mixture of concern and uncertainty, What does he really want to do? Her mind racing with unanswered questions. Despite her misgivings, she knows that challenging Lin Dao's futile, given his evident strength. Facing Lin Dao, Leng Yue Shuang braces herself for what is to come, her expression guarded yet attentive. As Lin Dao begins to speak, revealing surprising details about her ancestor Leng Qiangqiu, a wave of shock washes over her. The weight of his revelations leaves her speechless, her mind reeling with the implications of his words. Witnessing her master's reaction, the holy maiden Ji Ming Yu can't help but feel perplexed. What on earth is this person saying? She wonders silently, her gaze shifting between Lin Dao and Lung Yu Shuang. The sight of her usually composed master displaying such emotion is unprecedented, leaving Ji Ming Yu at a loss for words. Gathering her composure, Lung Yu Shuang nods solemnly, her voice steady despite the tumult of emotions within her. I understand, she declares her words echoing through the hall with quiet resolve. From today onward, Senior Lin, you are now the new sect leader of our Divine Blade sect. After a few days, the sect announces the engagement of their holy maiden Ji Ming Yu and the Lin Dao. Our protagonist, Lin Dao, and the holy maiden Ji Ming Yu stand side by side, their attires resplendent in crimson. As the wedding invitations circulate among the sect members, Shock ripples through the crowd. The holy maiden Ji Ming Yu and Lin Dao getting married in three days? Someone exclaims incredulously, disbelief etched on their face. The news of the holy maiden's impending nuptials with a once expelled disciple of the celestial sword sect sends ripples of astonishment throughout the realm. It's impossible, protests another, their voice tinged with disbelief. The holy maiden Ming Yu taking a husband? Who could be worthy of her? The revelation shakes the very foundation of long held aspirations, leaving some disillusioned and disheartened. However, amidst the sea of conflicting emotions, 
A voice rises above the tumult, trembling with anger and resentment. Holding the wedding invitation in a trembling hand, a figure steps forward, his features contorted with fury. I pursued you persistently for three years, he seethes, his voice echoing with bitter betrayal. And you're going to marry a discarded disciple of the Celestial Sword sect? With a primal scream of anguish, he addresses Lin Dao directly, his words dripping with irreconcilable enmity. Lin Dao, there is irreconcilable enmity between us. The proclamation hangs heavy in the air. On the rooftop, under the vast expanse of the night sky, Ji Ming Yu's troubled expression betrayed her inner turmoil. How did Master believe the nonsense of a guy who likes to show off? She questions aloud, her voice tinged with frustration. Memories of her recent conversation with her master swirl in her mind, each word a painful reminder of misplaced trust. She recalls her master's reassurance, uttered with unwavering conviction. Ming Yu, you must know that you won't be wronged. This person can lead our divine blade sect and become the foremost figure in Dongjiang, no, even across the entire continent. Beside her, a figure cloaked in calmness stands tall. It is Lin Dao, his gaze steady as he speaks with an air of certainty. Rest assured, the grand wedding is just a disguise. I'm not interested in you. Women only affect the speed of wielding a blade. As the weight of betrayal settles upon his shoulders, Lin Dao's thoughts turn to the future, his resolve hardening with each passing moment. Over ten thousand years have elapsed, he muses, his voice laced with determination. Wang Xianer may have grown stronger, but the time for retribution will come. With a steely gaze, he contemplates the path ahead, knowing that patience and diligence are his greatest allies. Now is not the time to expose oneself. I should cultivate in seclusion. When the wings are fully developed, then I will seek revenge, he declares. In a moment of reflection, Lindau finds solace in the irony of his situation. Who would have thought, he muses, a faint smile tugging at his lips, that the discarded disciple of the Celestial Sword Sect would rise to become the husband of the Divine Sword Sect's Holy Maiden. In the grand main hall of the Divine Blade Sect, tension crackles in the air like electricity. An elder, his face contorted with displeasure, directs his ire towards Leng Yu Shuang, the sect master. Sect master, this is too much of a joke. I can't agree, he exclaims, his voice dripping with anger. The holy maiden and my son were childhood friends. They should have been a couple. What is this Lin Dao, a discarded disciple of the celestial sword sect? How can he be worthy of the holy maiden? Before Leng Yu Shuang can respond, a voice cuts through the escalating confrontation. It is our protagonist, Lin Dao, his presence commanding attention as he interjects. A joke. There is no such thing in this world that I, Lin Dao, cannot be worthy of. Ji Ming Yu, the Holy Maiden, seethes with fury at Lin Dao's audacity, muttering under her breath. A thing? Who the hell is your thing? The elder's anger reaches its peak while pointing his finger at Lin Dao. What a big mouth. Who do you think you are? He exclaims. But before he can finish his sentence, Lin Dao's patience snaps. You are so loud, Lin Dao retorts, his voice thundering with righteous indignation. With a surge of energy, he unleashes a powerful force that sends the elder hurtling through the air, crashing into the wall with a resounding impact. The hall falls silent. Shock registers on the faces of the onlookers, their eyes widening in disbelief at the display of Lin Dao's strength. Despite the chaos that had ensued moments before, sect master Leng Yu Shuang of the Divine Sword sect remains composed, calmly sipping from her cup of water. With poise and authority, she addresses the elders gathered before her, her voice carrying weight and determination. I am the sect master of the divine sword sect Lung Yue Shuang, she declares, her words resonating through the hall. Elders, today I have invited you here not for discussion but for notification. A palpable energy emanates from her body as she continues, If there's nothing else, 
you may leave now. One of the elders, still visibly injured from the encounter with our protagonist, struggles to maintain his composure. With a dissatisfied expression, he grumbles, Humph, to force me with strength, I acknowledge it reluctantly. With a nod of respect towards the sect master, he takes his leave. In the forest beyond the confines of the sect, the elder's son, Jo Mubai, awaits his father's return behind a tree. Concern etches his features as he observes his father's condition. What happened? Are you injured? He inquires anxiously. His father's response is grave, filled with warning. Mubai, you need to be careful of Lin Dao. I didn't expect him to be so powerful and ruthless. Without a word, he would severely injure me. Zhou Mubai's shock is evident as he processes his father's words. How is that possible? He exclaims, his fists clenched in anger. Dad, Jiming Yue must not marry the villain Lin Dao. His father's tone is resolute as he reassures his son, Humph, from what I've seen, Lin Dao is nothing more than an ordinary man. Rest assured, Ji Ming Yu will ultimately be yours. The Divine Sword sect will ultimately belong to our Zhou family. In his room, our protagonist dedicates himself to cultivation with unwavering determination, surrounded by a pulsating energy that signifies his relentless effort. His goal is clear to attain the pinnacle of martial prowess as swiftly as possible, driven by an insatiable thirst for revenge. In this world, the path of martial cultivation is divided into nine realms, each representing a stage of spiritual and physical enlightenment, postnatal, prenatal, mysterious elixir, condensing spirit, breaking through Yuan, celestial phenomenon, mysterious deity, immortality, and celestial emperor. As he opens his eyes, our protagonist reflects on the arduous journey ahead. Ordinary martial cultivators must first undergo body refining, which is divided into three levels, chi and blood, tendons and bones, and the great unity, he murmurs to himself, his voice a solemn whisper. Only by achieving the unity of blood and bones, reaching the perfection of postnatal cultivation, can one comprehend the spiritual energy of heaven and earth and step into the realm of prenatal cultivation? With a profound sense of purpose, he embraces the power within him, transcending the limitations of the mortal realm. The blade is the path, and the blade's heart is my own celestial heart. All the powers belonging to the celestial path can continuously strengthen myself. I am the Tao, he declares with conviction. Adorned in garments befitting his newfound stature, he speaks with confidence. The realm of prenatal cultivation is further divided into nine levels, from bottom to top, ranging from the ninth grade to the first grade, he states, his tone resonating with authority. My current level is the seventh grade of prenatal cultivation, but in terms of combat strength, below the second grade of prenatal cultivation, no one is my match. Before he steps beyond his chamber's threshold, he imparts a chilling warning. The sect master of the Celestial Sword Sect, Xu Jian Sheng, is only at the fourth grade of prenatal cultivation, he announces, his words a prelude to impending retribution. Since I have taken over this body, the grudges of the original flesh are now my grudges. Celestial Sword Sect, prepare to meet your end. As our protagonist walks down the street, he becomes the target of mockery and disdain from passers-by. Is this Lin Dao, the abandoned disciple of the Celestial Sword Sect? Sneers a burly man, his voice laced with contempt. Hey, hey, he is just someone living off someone else's support, adds another with a wicked grin, his tone dripping with scorn. But amidst the taunts, a sly remark emerges. I think someone who might catch the eye of the Holy Maiden can't be considered worthless, can he? Unfazed by the jeers, our protagonist brushes off their insults, muttering under his breath. Why do I always encounter a bunch of idiots wherever I go? Isn't what I comprehend the aura of idiocy rather than the blade's essence? Lost in his thoughts, he suddenly notices a plaque on the wall. The treasure vault of the Divine Blade sect? 
he murmurs, a spark of curiosity igniting within him. It just so happens that I'll go take a look at what treasures the Divine Blade sect has. But before he can make his way to the vault, he's confronted by a man blocking his path. Only core disciples are qualified to enter here. Dogs and son-in-laws aren't allowed, the man declares, his tone dripping with disdain. Glancing at our protagonist, the man mutters to himself, This person is clearly not as handsome as me. Why does Ji Ming Yu prefer this type? Enraged by the insult, our protagonist fixes the man with a fierce glare, his fists trembling with suppressed fury. But before he can react, the man issues a command with a smug grin. Get lost. Then he adds, Clearly, only the son of Elder Zhou is worthy of the Holy Maiden. This area is under the jurisdiction of Elder Zhou. Do you understand? Beside him, his companion echoes, We don't welcome son-in-laws here. Get lost. With fury coursing through his veins, our protagonist emits a terrifying aura that sends shockwaves through the trio, their smug expressions replaced by fear. Suddenly, Zhou Mubai appears in front of our protagonist, clapping his hands in a sinister applause. Good point, he sneers. Who do I think dared to be presumptuous in front of my family's treasure vault? It turns out it's you, the dog that the Celestial Sword sect doesn't want. With a sinister smile twisting his features, he addresses our protagonist. Fate is truly narrow. I haven't avenged my father's injury yet, and you've come knocking on my door first. Remaining composed, our protagonist inquires, Who are you? However, as he speaks, black and red energy begins to radiate from Zhou Mubai's body, casting an ominous aura around him. With a clenched fist and a venomous glare, Zhou Mubai steps forward. Taking my love, injuring my father, he seethes, his anger palpable. Surprised by the evil energy swirling around his opponent, our protagonist's expression shifts to one of surprise. Demonic energy? He mutters under his breath. Without warning, Zhou Mubai rushes toward Lin Dao, wielding a red blade with deadly precision. With his blade ghost secret technique, he sent Lin Dao soaring into the air, inflicting a slight injury upon him. With a malevolent smirk, Zhou Mubai charges forward once more, unleashing a relentless onslaught of strikes. Techniques like the Ghost Light Soul Blade and Black Moon 19 rain down upon Lin Dao, each blow landing with brutal force. Yet, instead of evading, Lin Dao stands firm, allowing each strike to land upon his body. His determination remains unshaken, his resolve unwavering in the face of adversity. As the fierce battle unfolds before them, Zhou Mubai's friends are left in shock. One, sporting an eye patch, exclaims, it's over. Senior brother Zhou Mubai has murderous intent. His companion, equally alarmed, urges, Hurry, go inform the elders. This is going to end in bloodshed. With a menacing glare, Zhou Mubai declares, Today, I'm going to cut you into pieces. He lunges forward, wielding his bloody blade with deadly precision, aiming to strike our protagonist relentlessly and tear through his defenses. Unperturbed by his opponent's ferocious assault, our protagonist maintains a confident smile. You want to cut me into pieces? With just a toy in your hand? He taunts, his demeanor cool and collected. Joe Mubai, undeterred, retorts, You can still laugh? Have you lost so much blood that you're delirious? He sneers. As the remnants of his once new clothing flutter to the ground, Lin Dao stands, his demeanor calm his smile unwavering. A mere flesh wound is not worth mentioning. Youngster, perhaps you don't quite understand, he declares with an air of superiority. The body of a blade cultivator can be tougher than the blade itself. With a derisive smile, Zhou Mubai retorts, The body is tougher than the blade? You're truly foolish. This ghost howl blade is the treasured heirloom of my Zhou family, yellow tier middle grade. However, much to his shock and fury, the blade shatters into pieces, leaving him seething with anger and gritting his teeth. What kind of demonic magic are you using? He demands, his composure slipping. In a swift movement, our protagonist appears before Zhou Mubai, 
his expression now one of simmering anger. I rarely put on a set of Armani from the cultivation world, and within two days of wearing it, you've already chopped it. Hurry up and compensate me! He demands, delivering a powerful punch that sends the villain flying and crashing into the ground with a resounding thud. As our protagonist seizes his bag containing crystals, he taunts, Hey! You act all high and mighty, claiming to be a rich young master, but you only have so little money in your pocket? At that moment, Joe Mubai nearly loses his mind due to Lin Dao's provocation. He tries to bite our protagonist like a mad dog, but fortunately, his friends manage to hold him back. Fuming with anger, Joe Mubai shouts loudly, Lin Dao, I will never give up, even if it means fighting to the death. His declaration reverberates through the air, a testament to the depth of his hatred and determination to seek revenge. At the treasure vault, our protagonist examines the elixir in his hand with a critical eye. There's a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, they're all defective, he remarks, with a hint of disappointment. Casting a glance at the staircase leading to the second floor, he decides, Oh, there's a second floor. I will go up and take a look. Ascending the stairs, he explores the items on the second floor, only to find them equally unsatisfactory. With a disappointed expression, he mutters, The things on the second floor are also useless. Suddenly, a figure emerges behind Lin Dao, exuding an ominous aura. The newcomer warns, Kid, you can't take things from the second floor. Unfazed, our protagonist responds calmly, These defective items? Do you think I would be interested in them? Is there anything better? The old man's temper flares at Lindau's words. You don't like it? You've got quite an attitude, he retorts, his voice tinged with irritation. Turning his head to face the old man, Lindau remains composed. The best pills here are only of the lower yellow grade. I need the least yellow rank top grade pills. The entire Divine Blade sect can't possibly be without them, right? Yellow tier top quality? I've lived for so many years and haven't seen more than a few yellow tier top quality pills, the old man explains. Continuing with determination, Lin Dao declares, Is the alchemy standard of the Divine Blade sect so low? Forget it. I'll refine them myself. Old man, prepare a thousand stalks of heavenly heart grass for me. I'll come to collect them in three days. His resolve is evident as he plans to take matters into his own hands to acquire what he needs. Upon hearing Lin Dao's audacious demands, the old man's patience wears thin. Gripping his stick tightly, he channels his energy, preparing to unleash his fury upon our protagonist. Outrageous! Even the sect master wouldn't dare to speak to me in such a disrespectful manner and dictate my actions. He seethes, his voice thick with indignation. Sensing the impending danger, Lindau reacts swiftly, tapping into the power of his eyes. Suddenly, a formidable surge of energy envelops the old man, freezing him in midair. Caught off guard by this sudden turn of events, the old man struggles against the invisible force his efforts proving futile against the overwhelming power of our protagonist. Despite his best attempts, he was unable to break free from the grip of the energy that binds him. Do you understand? Our protagonist's voice cuts through the tension, firm and commanding. Hurry up and prepare the heavenly heart grass for me. Fuming with anger, the old man grits his teeth in frustration. I am already at the ninth stage of the innate realm he seethes, his voice tinged with resentment. How did this kid manage to achieve that? Before the standoff can escalate further, a newcomer arrives on the scene, interrupting the tense confrontation. Is Brother Lin Dao here? The man inquires, his voice cutting through the charged atmosphere. I have a message for you. Accepting the letter, our protagonist unfolds its contents. A wave of shock washes over him, transforming his calm countenance into one of disbelief. Shu Wu Wang! he cries out. With lightning speed, our protagonist rushes out of the treasure vault. In the desolate expanse of the Valley of Death, a chilling scene unfolds amidst the barren landscape. 
Two menacing figures stand tall, their presence casting a shadow over the forlorn terrain. Between them, a delicate figure trembles, held captive in their grasp. It's Yi Yi, the sister of our protagonist, Lin Dao. As they await Lin Dao's arrival, tension hangs heavy in the air, the anticipation palpable. The smaller of the two men sneers disdainfully as he speaks of Lin Dao. That Lin Dao is just a little brat, he scoffs, his voice dripping with contempt. Shu Wu Wang actually went so far as to pay a high price to get the dead man sect involved. Yi Yi's plea for her brother's safety falls on deaf ears as the smaller man, his cruelty evident, grasps her by the hair, his grip tightening with each passing moment. Oh, what a lively girl, he jeers, his words laced with malice. I don't have to kill your brother as long as you beg me. You can also try to serve me well. As long as you please me, I promise to keep your brother alive. Beside him stands a hulking figure, his presence foreboding beneath a sinister mask. With a voice like gravel, he interjects, his intentions equally sinister. Enough, old ghost, he growls, his tone commanding. No one has ever survived under the dead man's sect. This little girl is still a fledgling. Don't think about monopolizing her. I want to taste the head soup of a virgin's primal essence. The old ghost, undeterred by his companion's desires, counters with a proposition of his own. Skip the head soup, he retorts, his voice dripping with menace. Any woman you've touched is no different from a pig or a rag. How about a bet? If I can capture Lin Dao within three moves, then this primal essence is mine for the taking. Suddenly, dark clouds gather ominously in the sky, heralding the arrival of a thunderstorm. The air crackles with electricity as lightning flashes and thunder roars. Observing the darkening skies, the old ghost remarks with a hint of surprise. It's getting windy, he observes, his voice barely audible over the howling gale. As raindrops pelt the ground, he turns his gaze towards Lin Dao, who strides towards them with determined resolve. It's actually raining, the old ghost continues, his tone laced with begrudging admiration. Lin Dao, you have quite a bit of influence. Even the heavens are showing pity for you. But Lin Dao, undeterred by the storm or the words of his enemy, meets their taunts with a fierce resolve. It's not raining for me he declares defiantly, his voice cutting through the din of the storm like a blade. And then, with eyes blazing with fury, he shouts, It's for you! While pulling out his sword, the old ghost sneered, Hmm, you've got a sharp tongue. With lightning speed, he lunges towards Lin Dao, aiming his sword directly at his neck. But Lin Dao is quick on his feet, effortlessly dodging the attack with a graceful sidestep. As the confrontation escalates, Lin Dao's sister, Yi Yi, pleads with him to flee. Brother, they want to kill you. Run quickly. Don't worry about me. She cries out, her voice filled with urgency and fear. Surprised by Lin Dao's agility, the old ghost chuckles darkly. Hey, hey, you can see through my technique? You're quite skilled. Now watch carefully, he taunts, preparing to unleash his full power. With a swift motion, the old ghost initiates the first move of his deadly technique, spinning his sword with blinding speed. Beside him, his towering companion observes with interest, recognizing the intricate nature of the old ghost's technique. It's already the second move, the giant guy remarks. With a burst of speed, the old ghost conjures multiple copies of his sword, launching them in all directions with precision and skill making it hard for our protagonist to dodge and escape. Lin Dao, undeterred by the onslaught, remains focused and composed, his eyes locked on his opponent's every move. Humph, a mere trick, Lin Dao declares with confidence. With a determined expression, he swiftly counters the onslaught, using his palms to deflect the incoming swords and send them hurtling back towards their origin. Seeing his companion hardly dodges the deflected attack in the last moment, the huge guy exclaims, Reverse the old ghost's sword move and returned it to him. How is that possible? His surprise evident on his face. Turning his head around to check on the hostage, he is met with another shock. 
Where is she? He exclaims, his voice filled with disbelief. However, his eyes soon land on our protagonist, holding his sister tightly, and he gasps in amazement. That was so fast! Upon seeing the bruises on his sister's body, our protagonist's blood boils with rage. Sorry, little sister, he mutters, his voice trembling with emotion. But don't take off your blindfold for now. His anger simmers as he adds, Because there's going to be bloodshed next. The old ghost rushes toward them, his eyes gleaming with malice. Bastard, you're talking big, he snarls. Today, I will kill you. With a swift motion, he unleashes the second move of his technique, the Heavenly Way, a move known for its deadly precision and power. At that critical moment, our protagonist channels the power of his left eye, unleashing a surge of energy in the form of a blade to block the oncoming attack of his enemy. What a strong pressure! exclaims the old ghost, his voice echoing with awe and surprise. But our protagonist's counterattack doesn't end there. With steely resolve, he launches another strike, sending the old ghost hurtling through the air with a serious injury to his chest. The giant watches in shock as his companion falls, a look of horror etched on his face. Rushing forward to aid his comrade, but before he can reach the old ghost, our protagonist unleashes another technique with his right eye, known as sheath. It tears the old ghost apart, reducing him to a bloody mess that rains down upon the giant guy. As the huge guy senses the overwhelming killing intent emanating from our protagonist's body, fear grips him. Who? Who the hell are you? He stammers, his voice trembling with uncertainty. Even the sect master? No. I haven't sensed such a heavy aura of killing intent even on the Patriarch. It's even more impossible for a teenage cultivator to have this kind of cultivation. He's not human at all. In his mind, he visualizes our protagonist as an evil demon, a being of unimaginable power and darkness. This can only be explained by a thousand-year-old demon possessing his body, he concludes, his heart pounding with dread. As our protagonist advances toward his enemy with unwavering determination, he responds coolly, You don't deserve to know who I really am. His voice is calm, but there's an underlying intensity that sends shivers down the giant guy's spine. So tell me, our protagonist continues, his gaze unwavering, how do you want to die? Hearing his words, the huge man kneels before Lin Dao, his voice laced with desperation. Shu Wu Wong has hired me from the dead man's sect, so please forgive me for offending you. I know where Shu Wu Wong is. I can take you to find him, and I am willing to be your sword servant, he pleads, hoping for mercy. His words, a mix of fear and hope, hang in the air as he continues. I beg you to spare my life, even if it means betraying the dead man's sect. But as soon as these words leave his lips, a startling transformation begins. The man's body convulses as if seized by an unseen force, and he emits a powerful energy that causes him to grow larger. With a voice that booms with newfound power, he declares, The clan is not that easy to betray, especially when you are a member of the evil sect. Without warning, the huge guy strikes at our protagonist with his massive sword, creating a huge crater in the ground. Our protagonist dodges the attack with ease, his movements fluid and precise. Holding his sword tightly, he prepares to launch another strike while gathering energy in his sword. At that moment, his sister's voice breaks through the chaos. Brother, watch out, she warns, her eyes wide with fear. But our protagonist remains unfazed, his expression calm and composed. He brushes the dust off his clothes and looks at the huge guy with a hint of disdain. Hmm. You're the worst sword cultivator I've ever seen, he remarks casually. Seeing the strike land on her brother, Yi Yi's heart clenches with fear and anguish. Tears stream down her cheeks as she cries out, Brother! Meanwhile, the huge guy lifts his sword above his head, his face contorted with rage. Go to hell, brat! he roars, his voice filled with malice and hatred. With a ferocious intensity, he begins slicing with his sword, unleashing destruction and chaos upon the surroundings. 
but our protagonist remains composed in the face of danger. With effortless grace, he catches the sword with his bare hand, his movements swift and sure. If you cut me down again, I'll have to change my clothes again, he remarks casually, his voice tinged with sarcasm. Evil arts are evil arts. Even intelligence is completely lost. With a display of strength, our protagonist breaks the sword with his grip, his determination evident in every movement. Clearly, you're a sword cultivator, he observes, his eyes narrowing with resolve. But you use the sword like a blade. Since that's the case, I'll show you what is called a blade art. With a surge of energy, our protagonist emits a bright light from his right eye and left hand. In an instant, four blades materialize from the energy, gleaming with a deadly precision. With unparalleled skill, he strikes the huge guy relentlessly, cutting through flesh and bone with ease. The force is so great that it splits the mountains in two, the earth trembling beneath their feet.